Miss Johanna. Johanna. Let me first check. The whole world, the globe, has just come out of this pandemic which has devastated the whole human humanity. We have lost millions of people in this uh, pandemic and we are still coming out of this. There is a ray of hope that we are coming out of this pandemic situations and will be normal. But we have forgotten one thing that there is a man-made disaster which is looming large on our humanity and there is sustenance of this world is at question. And if we don't wake up by 2100, maybe this human race will not survive. So what is that? That is nothing but climate change. We all have in our life, we have heard about parable of frog. That if you put a frog in boiling water, it comes out and saves itself. But if you put a frog in water and start eating it slowly, it dies in that boiling water because the time it thinks that it has to come out, it starts feeling the pain. By that time, it loses its capability to come out. And today, humanity is nothing but that frog in this boiling water. Such is the situation. You'll just see and the slides in my back, some screens, how things are happening. Let me tell you, let me share it with you, that for the first time, Siberia, sorry, first time in the Greenland, there was a rain instead of snowing. Presently, it is raining, whereas it never had rain. The northern hemisphere faced the most extreme temperatures in the last decade. You, you would remember that in Canada, in USA, in Europe, the temperature reached to 52 degrees centigrade. 50 degrees centigrade where they have never seen that and the whole, whole Canada was out and in the, uh, in the pools to survive. In last month, one month of rain came in one hour in middle of Europe and China and resulted in devastated flood. The whole uh, middle of China was devastated because of that flood. And we are experiencing the same thing everywhere. You will see number of storms, hurricanes, Yesterday, today's news is covering this. Then, because of the hurricanes and tornadoes, the frequency and the magnitude have increased drastically. There is shrinking and extinction of glaciers. How can we forget the flood in our northern region? Then there is so this, this is about climate changes, extremities of weather. It is so different that in Siberia, we are having a wildfire, whereas in Saudi Arabia, we are having snow. How will that camel will be able to adjust in the snow? And this is not all that we are coming to know about this situation of climate change today. This was known to mankind long back. So, I told this how things are changing and it is not affecting only one country or one continent. It is affecting each one of us. When we have talked of world, how can I forget to mention about Ranchi? Incidentally, incidentally I am from Ranchi. Just see this in 25 years, 
How long she has changed? It's Google photograph, food photographs. How long she has changed in 25 years? And in this 54 years of my existence in this world, that I saw the, the lake in which I learned swimming, it is no more. A lot of ponds and small uh, water bodies have just uh, evaporated, just gone by. It has been converted into concrete. And for the world, 30 years back, when we used to travel from Bukharu to this place, it used to be called Lakhri Train because people used to deforest and come to Ranchi to sell that wood. <coughs> so, what is what are those things which is doing this nonsense to this whole world? They are called greenhouse gases. But let me tell you, with you that these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, all this we are, we were talking about. They are the sole reason for our existence. Let me tell you, greenhouse gases, because of these greenhouse gases, we are existing. This humankind is surviving. Because sun is the only source of energy. And when it comes to earth, it is absorbed by the crust, that is soil and water, water bodies and rest. Majority of the heat is dispersed back, radiated back. And these gases, presence of these gases provides a temperature sufficient for this species to flourish and live. But again, so many of speakers have talked about greed and excessive use of industrialization and because of radiation of these gases as we are continuing to increase our power and transportation, use of transportation, carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide and all those gases and carbon dioxide is uh, 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 treated as villain because 85% of greenhouse gas emission is because of carbon dioxide. And a very funny thing, somebody was telling that agriculture, uh, they are emitting a lot of methane. Let me tell you, the uh, cows and buffaloes, which are growing in the methane is very high. And as why I saw that in New Zealand, there is a research that if they give them injection, they can change their bacteria in the udder so that they cannot emit methane. So, this is a natural phenomenon. But what was the reason? This whole world, this cycle was very beautifully designed by the God or the conscious level that whatever was needed, whatever was emitting in the atmosphere, the same amount was being captured by the sea. So there was a balance. And as I told, okay, this is not known to the mankind just now, 50, 60 years back when carbon dioxide was first measured by a scientist. This was known to everybody. But again, collective wisdom and coming together that it is a need of the mankind that we, everybody has to work for that. That took time. And historically, if you see greenhouse gas emission, I was just going through scientists say 275 ppm of carbon dioxide is sufficient. It is good for this earth to continue. And you know how much is the green uh, carbon dioxide uh, level in uh, today's world? A lot of youngsters are sitting. It is 420 ppm. And say 500 ppm is one level mankind would not be able to survive. So we are very much in a situation of that fraud and maybe a situation will come that even if we try to come out because these gases would continue. People, people ask me question that in pandemic lot of activities stop. So maybe this uh, 
greenhouse gas emission or the climate change would be reversed. No, it is a very long, long process. It remains in the atmosphere for number of years. So it takes time. And I was associated as my profession. I was associated. Uh, I'll come to that. So the mankind started working on it. People came to know that this is a threat. This is not a threat to a human being. The alone uh, a continent. So long back in 1982, IPCC, they, they, they collectively decided that we are moving ahead very fast as industrialization grew from 285 level. 1950, the level was 310 BPM. And this 285 to 310 was very fast. But afterwards, it is still very fast. It is 10x time. It's a cumulative effect. Right now, in 70 years, we have added 110 BPM carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. So with this rate, the rate is very, very high. With this rate, we are very sure to reach to 500 if we don't act together. And the moment says that each, it is the job of each individual, each society, each institution, and the whole factory and the country ends together. So 1992, if you all remember, those who were present, Rio Earth Summit was there, where people, 192 countries collected and they collectively agreed for doing something on this. And from 92, it is 29 years. We are struggling for the same thing. I was just discussing 92. People agreed that we have to reduce our carbon dioxide emission. But that time the topic was that these great nations, these developed nations are emitting more. That time America was the number one emitter and uh, Europe and all these developed countries were the major emitters. And China and India, our intensity was low, per capita intensity was low. But we were also contributing to this greenhouse gas emission. But there was a question that we are a developing nation, we have a right to develop and the developed countries should help us with technology and with money so that we can also have a sustainable climate change. And it took so many years. In 2004, 2004, I remember clearly, USA was the biggest emitter. But when I came to, I started thinking of uh, speaking on this subject, now China is the biggest emitter. In this 10 15 years, it has overtaken America by thrice. Because intensity was low, they, they started developing, and now China is the biggest emitter. And you know, for surprise, India was nowhere in ranking. India is the third biggest emitter in the world. So, we, it is a collective duty of all of us to understand that we are in situation, very bad situation. So this conscious, this all the scientists have agreed together and recently started from 2004 when Kyoto Protocol was there that we will be doing something and developed countries would be helping us. Then it went on. Every year COP is meeting is taking place by one year because of pandemic. And in the last five years back, Paris, where people agreed for voluntary reduction, that is called NCD, National uh, Determinants. And then COP26, which is recently have been, has been concluded, here it has been agreed that by it has to be reduced by 1.5 degrees centigrade. It has already increased, the temperature has increased by 1 degree centigrade, and at the most 1.5 degree centigrade would be reduced. Now the issue is, now it is not the carbon dioxide emission or greenhouse gas emission rates. People are now talking of carbon neutrality. Carbon neutrality means whatever carbon dioxide they will emit, they will have the absorption capacity, similar capacity so that they will not add any greenhouse gas emission anymore. And good part of it is that around race to net zero, we call it 
75% of the nations have agreed for carbon neutrality by 2050. Everybody has a target till 2030. That is reduction in greenhouse gas intensity and neutrality by 2050. And China, good part is, it's very hopeful, I'm very hopeful that one, one aspect you are talking of hope, China has agreed for carbon neutrality by 2060 and India has committed to be neutral, carbon neutral by 2070. So this is our roadmap for carbon neutrality and why I agree for, why, why I look for hope, it is because China, now coming to my profession that is steel industry, China stopped 100 million ton of steel capacity, 100 million ton is what? India is making in by one stroke to commit to this environment or the climate change, they have stopped 100 million ton which was producing because they were facing this wrath of climate change and they agreed and they are working on it. So that is good thing. Steel, very much essential. It is one element that is which can be recycled in number of time without losing any quality. And it is required for sustenance of the mankind or development of the mankind. But, but, it is as, as hydrogen production increases, the dark and cost will also come down. And we, we have hope of green and a sustainable planet. And this appeals to me a lot. We do not inherit the earth. From our ancestors. It is, we are not inherited. We don't have any right to spoil it. We have to give it back. We have borrowed it off our children. What we are going to leave it for our children? If this earth is not there, what we are going to leave it? As everybody was speaking, so it is not individual's job. It is not everybody. It is not that it is limited to our country. So let us pledge today that each one of us in our area of efficiency, area of approach, let us work on a sustainable way in whatever way we can contribute <coughs> so that so that we can come out of that situation. And that is possible with the help of with the help of cooperation, all whole world coming together. This is quite possible and there are technologies are there, there are breakthrough technologies are there. So, and, and things are changing, things are changing for the good. Uh, 20 years back, our carbon, our uh, coal uh, portion in our uh, portion, uh, production was 70%, right now it is 60%. So, another, another by 2030, it will be 50% from renewable. So, there is a lot of hope and let us move with this hope. Thank you.